Hey, Life Group Leaders, how's it going? Man, what a beautiful fall day it is today. I am sorry that you have to look at this. I woke up with this cold sore. It's disgusting. I, I Anyway, I'll just keep wearing masks. But anyway, um, we're talking about take and eat. That's right, communion, the Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving, and I think you're getting ready for Thanksgiving. Doesn't it feel like it just went from Halloween to Christmas, though? Literally went in a store yesterday with my daughter Annie, and it's all Christmas, everything, the music. So then when we got back in the car, she pulled out her phone and on Spotify got her favorite Michael Bublé Christmas. She could listen to Christmas music all the time. Avery's the same way. People have strong opinions about that. Anyway, Matthew 26, starting in verse 20, it's where we find Jesus sitting back, reclining in the evening, it says, as he's saying, take this bread and this cup. Well, that was what they'd done for... 1500 years prior to that. So if you're doing the math, this is 2000 years ago that Jesus is doing this. So 1500 years, I was never good at geography. You get the idea they've been doing this ritual for a long time. It was the Passover. And he is saying, I am the Passover lamb. And he's talking about that his blood will be splattered on the wood of the cross, not the lamb's blood splattered on the wood of the doorposts as God commanded God's people to do, and that the sacrificial lamb would actually protect their firstborn. And Jesus is saying he is the firstborn who will die for us. It is mind-blowing, and it's beautiful. And my hope is that you are able to prepare your heart for, I promise as a life group leader, you know about communion, you know about receiving the elements, but take extra time to read this passage each day. Maybe take some notes on things that stick out. Uh, but just be reminded of the fact that everything points to Jesus. I think it's J.I. Packer that said it's uh, J.I. Packer or Spurgeon. I'm confusing two people who says that we are looking through the glasses of communion to Jesus. The, the, the Communion is like putting on glasses to see Jesus. And that's what Jesus was trying to wake up the disciples, that this Passover meal has been pointing to me, the Lamb of God, to take away the sin of the world. And another thing to encourage you as a life group leader or your life group members is to, as Corinthians, Paul said in Corinthians 11, 28, he said that we should examine our hearts as we partake or receive. We don't take, we receive the cup, the, which is the blood of Christ, and the bread, which is representative of the body of Christ. So, as we talk about communion ultimately being about unity in Christ, which means we remember what Christ has done and repent of our sin, and we've been talking a lot about repentance, maybe some of you are like, enough of the repentance. Well, on one level, uh, there's not enough of repentance, actually, but it, it may not be repentance of our own personal relationships with others, but with God, and just say, God, examine my heart. Let me know if there's any sinful way in my heart today. And I want to be released of that. So that's a pre communion is all about the preparation of the heart, not the preparation of the elements. Clearly, I don't have one with me, but as we're going to receive communion together this Sunday, November the 7th, right? That's this Sunday, November 7th. We'll have those little portable elements. I mean, nothing says that the, the way in which we receive communion doesn't matter <laughs> than these little peel the top layer, and there's like a, what is that? That looks like a French fry in the back of a minivan from a month ago. And then you peel the next layer, and it's just minute made. So I don't, anyway. So the Bible doesn't prescribe how, but it's that we do remember and repent. That we remember what Christ has done and repent of our own sin. And just say, God, I want to be closer with you, right with you. And of course, right with others. And that's what it's all about. So I'm excited about this. You know, you, you, we read this familiar passage about Judas being betrayed. Jesus predicts like, and the one who dips his hand will betray me. And everyone's like, is it me? Is it me? Well, here's the deal. You and I, on any given moment when we sin, are betraying God. God won't stop loving us, and he will never leave us. But at any given moment, we are being like Judas, betraying God when we choose sin versus trust and obedience. So just examine your own personal heart as a life group leader. And, and maybe, hopefully, you're sending out messages in advance to your life groups to say, hey, we're meeting together. We're going over this passage. It's about communion. Also, show up at church this Sunday. I'm telling you, it, a lot of people are in bad habits. Was that Ed Sheeran? Was that bad habit? I won't, I won't sing that. 
but please, life group leaders, show up. You know, since July, we've had 40 new families visit our church. Well, here's the problem. Those visitors are coming and they're not seeing you and our core leaders because people are coming like once every six weeks and there needs to be a consistent connection with visitors so that they know who to connect with and who, you know when they say like oh my kid knows so and so and they're not here that causes them not to want to come back or not come to a kids ministry program or a youth program so middle school youth is huge on Sunday mornings at 10 30 so that's sixth through eighth grade and then of course middle school happens on Tuesday nights high school on Sunday nights and then all the birth through fifth grade on Sunday mornings by the way starting on November 21st that day will be everybody worships together uh, like old school pre-COVID. And then after the worship songs, we will dismiss kids uh, K through fifth grade to go to the Red Door for their environments of growing closer to God and go deeper in the Word. So anyway, a lot going on, but it's, uh, it's contingent upon you, the life group leaders, to tell your life group members. And you, everyone getting this message, represents about... 140 human beings. That's exciting, but it's really contingent upon you to do the communications, the callings, the texts, the emails, how's it going, care, prayer, and invitation. Invite them back to church. And then each of you bring friends, and I'm excited for Advent. I can't wait. Nick and Julie Nave, you probably saw them last Sunday, unless you weren't there last Sunday. Uh, maybe you saw them online, but they're going to be leading worship all through Advent. That starts November 28th. I can't believe it. Advent. So there's just a lot going on. Also, if you want to help decorate the church for Christmas, just stick around for like an hour after church on the 21st of November. We'll have some Waldo pizza and decorate the place and get it ready for worshiping the birth of Christ. A lot going on. So I'll leave you with this. As we are receiving, we don't take, right? Because take and eat was what the rebellion action of Adam and Eve when they took and eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the forbidden tree. We don't take and eat. When Jesus uttered the words take and eat, He's telling, he's, he's redeeming that rebellion. And it's in Christ that we receive because there's nothing we can do to earn this sacrificial love that takes away our sin. Jesus is life, death, and resurrection. So when he says take and eat, we are actually receiving. So we don't take and eat. Jesus is intentionally using that phrase to redeem the rebellion, to reverse the curse. And so you and I receive, just like we receive Jesus, we can't do anything to earn salvation. So I encourage you to dig into this passage and examine your heart. It's about the preparation of the heart, not the preparation of the elements that matters. All right, I look forward to seeing you all this Sunday. And come early. Uh, we need people here early, both for park. By the way, parking solved, so you can enter in on the east side or west side and exit on the east side. That's all back to normal. And, uh, and bring your life groups. We want to see this place full, worshiping God. So regroove those habits. Retrain your habits to gather because we experience grace when we come together face to face. When kids are seeing other kids or their friends or kids are seeing other parents or adults, it's an inspiration of like, this is my path moving forward. When I'm an adult, it's normal to gather for worship. So be that source of inspiration to others by gathering together this Sunday, November 7th. Look forward to seeing you. God bless. Hopefully this stinking cold sore will be